G'day guys and girls, it's Jay and welcome back to Derriere Farms, where today we're going to talk a little bit about how Farming Simulator 22 works, why I make videos about the mechanics of Farming Simulator 22, and I'm also going to ask you, my subscribers and my viewers that haven't subscribed yet, who hopefully will, to watch the video and leave me some feedback at the end of the video. Make a comment in the comment section and let me know what you think. And I'll get into the how and the why in a little bit. So first off, let's talk about how Farming Simulator 22 works. Well, it pretty much works just like any other farming simulator game where I won't say you buy a farm, you get a farm, you start with a farm, you plant some crops, you fertilize some crops, you grow some crops, maybe you buy some animals, you raise those animals, you sell them, you sell your crops, and you make money and you expand your farm and you grow. On the surface, it's very simple. It's just like every other farm you see near the game. And I went back all the way to oh, the first copy of Farming Simulator that I have. And essentially, those mechanics haven't changed a bit since the Farming Simulator franchise came out. However, things started to change a little bit. Probably the first major change to the Farming Simulator franchise was when Precision Farming was released in um, Farming Simulator 19 it added a whole new mechanic to the game. And I was fascinated by that. I mean, up until then, yes, you'd had new maps, you'd had new crops. We got, uh, we got sugar cane, we got potatoes. So the, slowly over the years, things changed and the game got a little bit more in depth and a little bit more in depth. And it grew from there. And then Farming Simulator 22 was announced and they started to talk about some of the features of the game, like productions. And I realized it wasn't going to be quite the same as the other games in the Farming Simulator franchise. And I was fascinated by that. I was really curious as to how they were going to make everything work with what they were talking about. All of a sudden, they were talking about essentially a whole new game that was going to take... Well, I don't want to say some mods. Um, but it was going to take things one step further than just modding and the base game itself was going to be transformed. We would now have productions. We would now have seasonal cycles. We would now have seasonal price fluctuations uh, based on the crop. Um, no longer would crops grow just in one day. Um, the crops would now have their own growing cycles. Uh, a bit like seasons in farming in previous versions, uh, the modded version of the game. But this was going to be built into the core. Same with productions. I mean, productions in Farming Simulator 19, while they were possible, they were really just modded versions of the animal pens and as that was the only thing that could produce product um, so people would take 
basically the concept of the the sheep pen and they would modify it and they would build mods around the way it worked so that instead of producing wool it would now produce pallets and obviously the mod itself the building would no longer be a sheep pen but it would be yeah, a facade but essentially it was an animal pen and now they're talking about unique productions with production cycles <clears throat> so i was truly intrigued uh, as to how they were going to make all this work and i'm a bit of an egghead um ever since farming simulator came out i've always experimented to see what works best and what doesn't work best um in the previous versions of the game it wasn't that difficult like i said you planted your field you fertilized you limed um you harvested and you sold your crops rinse repeat the next day and you just keep going So when I finally got my hands on a copy of Farming Simulator 22, I started to dig into the game, um, a bit like I had in the other games. Plant my crops, grow, expand. Finally, I tend to play very realistically because I was a farmer myself. Um, and then finally I expanded into productions. And then I started to ask more and more questions. Like I said, I'm an egghead. So I wanted to know, for example, take the dairy production here in France versus the one in the US map. What do these cycles mean? Production costs is obvious, but how does the cycles tie in with the recipe? And yes, I did a video on that. I wanted to know how I could maximize my production facilities. I wanted to know again with the bread, you know, why, how, why is bread production so much more efficient with the bakery than let's say the dairy? And it turns out the mechanics, the way they've written the scripts for the various buildings are different. Animals are slightly different too now. If you've watched my animal video, and if you haven't already figured out, animals, while they don't have a, let's say, well, they have a life cycle while they never really die. You buy an animal at a discounted rate, which is supposed to represent, you, know, you can buy them at any life stage from newborn to adult. And that was new. In previous versions of the game, you just brought sheep. I think you pay, I can't remember what you paid. I think you paid uh, I'll say we'll take a cow where you paid a couple of thousand dollars for a cow all of a sudden it became worth half as much and you put the cow in the dairy you milk the cow and you had the option they would breed and you could sell your excess cows if you wanted to but for the most part they weren't huge money makers selling animals for profit. You were far, with the exception of pigs, you were far better off selling the wool and the milk and the eggs. Now with Farming Simulator 22, like I said, you kind of have a life cycle where the animal's worth X amount when it's a newborn it slowly goes up in price. It hits an optimal, and we'll take beef cows as an example, uh, which was a new concept in this game too, beef versus dairy cows, before they were just cows. And 
the beef cow became worth more and more, just like it does in real life. So I wanted to know where was the optimal point to sell this cow. Because as they got older, their value started to decrease. Again, like in real life, uh, a beef farmer will raise an animal to a certain age, he will then sell it and he gets paid partly on the weight of the animal, partly on the age of the animal. Um, but the older the cow gets, obviously the less it's worth because the beef is no longer prime. The cow tends to uh, either get fatty, uh, muscles get sinuous, just like people, they age and they go past the prime in their life. So I decided, like I said, I was going to dig into all these factors and I was going to make videos and share them with people. So that's why I started the channel. So that everybody could figure out how the game work works and how you get the most out of it. Now, don't get me wrong by this comment. I'm a big fan of Dagoin. Uh, for those of you, who, I'm sure most of you have watched at some point his videos. Um, and I watch his videos every day. And he is a great storyteller. But it frustrates me a little bit that at this point in the game, he is still, I hate to use the term, I don't want to use the term, and like I said, I don't want to criticize him because he makes fantastic videos, story videos. Um, but his understanding of the game mechanics are a little bit lacking and he's still trying he's still figuring out um, how to do things properly if that's a polite way of putting it um, I won't go into the video which video it was or what he was trying to do but he was trying to do something the other day in one of his videos and I was like, no, 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 don't do that. And I'm like thinking, you know, yeah, I'm still new. I'm still not very well known as a YouTuber yet. But I'm thinking, I've got a video on that. If you had 20 minutes to watch it, you would know how that game mechanic works. And... The reason I mention this is because um, he's in many ways still farming like you would have in Farming Simulator 19. Whereas the game mechanics, especially like I said with productions and so on, have changed. I'll give you an example, and this is, is not aimed at Dagoin, this is aimed at... <clears throat> quite a few YouTubers in general, and I don't know what you as a viewer do or don't do, but tractor maintenance. <clears throat> I see a lot of people that let their tractor maintenance bar get down into, well, almost the bottom. In Farming Simulator 19, it was a flat rate. Like, yes, the lower it went, the, yes, you had to pay to repair it, it was slightly incremental based on the amount of damage, but it wasn't like it is in Farming Simulator 22, where the repair cost increases incrementally. So the longer you wait, the more expensive it gets by the hour. And if you've watched my video, you'll understand that. But 
say you take a tractor and you run it for an hour <clears throat> and it's going to cost you $100 to repair it. You run the same tractor for two hours and instead of it costing you $200 to repair it, it now costs you $250 to repair it. You run it for five hours without a repair and all of a sudden you might be looking at a $2,000 repair bill. So the repair is incremental. And again, those are the things I like to look at, examine, and why, again, as I said, I produce the videos I do. Now, when I, now when I make these videos, I, as you know, for those of you that have followed the channel, are following the channel, I tend to walk you through the process. And show you why. Um, a good example of this, uh, and I'm going to use this example because this is where I want your feedback, is I made a video on um, this map, Obey Laurent, about tires, especially with large tractors, tires versus tracks, which is more efficient, which gives you more traction on flat ground and on a hill. In fact, I used this hill on the south end of Obey Laurent to do the test on. Um, we tested the, like I said, duels versus singles versus wide tracks versus narrow tracks. Um, and you can watch the video if you want to find out the difference. And what's more efficient. Now, not, it's not just this video, but I'm, gonna, I'm using this one as an example. I've noticed a couple of comments recently coming in, and I don't know whether it's because the channel's getting more popular and more people are watching, but the comment was left, um, and it actually got a couple of thumbs up. The comment was essentially, what was it, 15 minutes to tell us that tracks are better than tires? Why didn't you just say that from the beginning? So like I said, this is where I kind of want your feedback is should I do what I'm doing with the AGI West Steel um, video series where I do a quick over, well, as quick as I can overview of the main functionality of the, in this case, the DLC, and then do a couple of, uh, let's call them nerdy videos, where we actually get into the specifics of what works best. Like I said, I still have a couple of questions about the West Steel. Well, I actually have the answers and I'm in the process of recording the videos. But, you know, I still have a couple of questions uh, or I had a couple of questions regarding seed production. Uh, now that we have all these different augers instead of just the belt system, I want to know which ones are the fastest at loading and unloading silos. Um, because we all know that obviously unloading in a facility like this one where it's a big dump is the fastest way but I want to know which of the augers are the fastest and which ones you should or shouldn't be using again depending on how much time you have um, in real life the size of the auger is what determines the speed at which it loads um, but Giants haven't given any of that information in the game, whether it's a 10 inch, a 12 inch, or a 14 inch auger. Um, so again, it's all experimentation to find out. I did it with the Precision Farming DLC, broke the series down into different segments like 
um, pH levels, nitrogen levels, uh, variable rate seeding, and put those into different videos. And it seemed to work quite well there. Um, people chose which they were most interested in, and some of them did really well. And the ones like, why do I need to lime? Well, it wasn't quite so popular. Um, but leave me a comment. Let me know. Do you enjoy or do you want to know, like I do, about the technical side of the game as well as having a quick conclusion uh, that you could jump to as a reference if you wanted to, um, let's say, a sh like a short synopsis video. Okay, so please, please leave me a comment. It's, uh, I don't have a community page yet because I don't have enough subscribers or else I would put, uh, put this in a poll. Um, but like I said, please leave me a comment. Uh, it, it won't take that long and just let me know what you guys think. Thanks for your time. Jake.